the ray frame buffer is a window that displays the rendering progress and gives us full control over the rendered output. It allows us to review, post process and save the render. To produce a render, choose one of the following options. Go to the menu Rendering and choose Render. Click on the Render Production button from the main toolbar. Press Shift and Q. When the rendering process starts, three windows appear in your screen. V-Ray Frame Buffer, V-Ray Messages and the Rendering Window. The rendering window shows the progress of the render. More specifically, next to the current task, you see two brackets. The first one shows the rendering time in real time, while the second bracket estimates the total time needed for the render to be completed. Below the current task is a progress bar that displays a green color that serves as a visual aid of the progress of the render. Once the render is produced, the rendering window disappears. There are two buttons in the rendering window, Stop and Cancel, and they both serve to abort the rendering process. The progress of the render can also be viewed at the bottom of the V-Ray Frame Buffer window. The V-Ray Messages window gives us updates on the rendering process, and if something goes wrong, you will see a warning or error in front of the message to go and fix it. And now, let's go to the V-Ray Frame Buffer window. It consists of the main view, this one, where the render unfolds, and these two side panels. The left panel is the render history, where we can save, load and compare renders. The right panel hosts the layers, which allow us to do layer compositing and fine-tune the render. Use the handles that divide each part to resize or collapse it. If we double-click on a handle, we hide and reappear the respective part. Rescale the V-Ray Frame Buffer by clicking and dragging the edges of the window. The layers allow us to adjust the rendered image by applying color corrections and other effects. Some of the most useful are The Exposure Control includes three different settings The Exposure, the Highlight Burn and the Contrast. To enable the exposure controls, click on Create Layer and choose Exposure. Go to its properties. Exposure allows us to make the rendered image brighter or darker. You can either slide the cursor or type a value. A value of plus 1 makes the image twice as bright, while minus 1 makes it twice as dark. So, if we set the exposure value to minus 2, the image gets darker, giving the feeling it is dusk. Well, if we didn't have the sun outside. Let's put the exposure back to zero. Do you see here these parts of the image that are rendered overexposed, like the sun burns them? Highlight Burn controls these parts, the highlights of the render. The lower we scroll, the less intense the bright areas of the render will be. And now, the areas no longer look burned. Contrast is the ratio between the white and the black, or in other words, the light and the dark parts of the scene. Don't overdo it with the setting, because it can destroy the image. Do you see that here? I usually set contrast to 0.1 to make the image pop up, have more depth. Click on the Create Layer button and choose White Balance. Then scroll down to its properties. White Balance is a photographic term and refers to the process of removing any color cast or tint from our photos. 
If all the lights that you are using have a white color, then you probably won't need to adjust the white balance. But if you are like me, who loves warm lighting, I always set my lights to 3500 Kelvin, then you always have to adjust the white balance, otherwise it's like there is an orange filter on our render. Can you see that here? All the rendering is very warm, very orange or yellowish. How does white balance work in V-Ray? Go to the temperature slider and slide to the left to make your render colder or to the right to make it warmer. In our example, we need to set the temperature approximately to 5000 Kelvin. How do you understand when to stop sliding? You always need to have a white color as a reference and make sure that your object renders pure white. What do I mean by that? In my example, the ceiling is supposed to be a white color. Same goes for my kitchen cabinets. When the temperature is set to 6500 Kelvin, which is the default value, they don't render white, but they have an orange hue. So, I start sliding to the left and at approximately 5000 they turn into white. And so, I am good to stop. Be careful because if you slide a lot, they will start turning into a light blue color. So, make smooth movements and stop when necessary. Curves allow us to adjust the contrast of the image. So, you would normally ask now, why use curves and not the contrast setting we saw earlier? And the answer is because with the curves we have better control over the contrast. And we will see that now. Click on the Create layer and choose Curves. This one is kind of tricky, let's say. Let me adjust the size of the Curves window to have better overview of this panel. We see two red dots, one placed at 0x0 zero zero and the other one at 1x1. One one. Click on the bottom left red dot and the red line appears. Click and drag the upper end of this red line and move it slightly downwards and to the right. The contrast of the render increases and the dark areas become darker. Then click on the upper right red point and another red line appears. Click and drag this white dot now and move it slightly upwards and to the left. The contrast of the render increases and the bright areas become brighter. At the end, you want the curve to form a light S. Don't overdo it, please, because it is easy to destroy your render. We want smooth movements, small adjustments, okay? If I click on the eye icon next to its setting, I disable it and re-enable it. So, do you see the difference before and after the adjustments we made? And now, there is one last layer that I would like to show to you. This one is automatically added as a layer, but by default it is disabled. Click on the lens effects and go to the properties. Check the enable bloom glare effect and the glare effect is automatically added to all the lights in the scene. To control the glare effect, adjust the size and the intensity values. In all of these layers that we just reviewed, there are not right or wrong values, so I can't give you specific numbers to use. Depending on the project and the scene you have every time, you play around depending on the result you are after. Moreover, I would like you to notice that our rendering is still being calculated, so we can add and adjust a layer while our rendering is being computed or after it is cleared, it won't make a difference. And here, 
you can see our render before and after the color corrections and defects applied. Before we finish with the layers, I would like to show you one more thing. You can repeat those layers more than once. So, if I click on the exposure layer, you see that our highlight burn is set to zero. So, it can go any lower than that. But what we can do is add another exposure layer and now we can reduce even more the highlights. When you don't need a layer, simply select it and choose Delete Selected Layers. V-Ray keeps all this info saved, so if I close the V-Ray Frame Buffer window, press Stop or Cancel and hit the Render button again. All this info will reapply on the next render. Render history allows us to save renders and compare them side by side in pairs of two or four. This feature is useful especially when we are on the testing phase and we still try to figure out our solution. We have this rendering here that is being calculated. It is not finished yet, but that's fine. I can come here to the history panel and click on the first button, Save to History. A preview of the render will appear in the History panel. If we leave the cursor on the preview, details of the produced render appear, like the resolution of the render, the time needed to be computed, and the name of the 3ds Max file. We can right-click on the preview, choose Edit Note, and rename the preview title, so that we remember what its render stands for in case we save many of them. Now, let's say that we are not sure whether we want to have the rug over here. I will click on the rug to select it, right-click and choose Hide Selection. I will produce one more render without the rug and click to save it to history. Now, there are two previews in the History panel. How can we compare these two renders? Click on the second button in the History toolbar, the A to B horizontal. Move the cursor to the right side of the first preview and when you see the B letter, click on the render. This way, we set it as image B for the A to B comparison. Then, move the cursor to the left side of the second preview and when you see the A letter, click on the render. So now that we have set which one is A and which one is B, you see that in the preview window, the half left shows the older render A and the half right shows the latest render B. The two are divided in the middle by a slider. Click on the slider and move the cursor to the left or to the right. When we slide to the left, the B image unveils, while when we slide to the right, we see the A image. And so we compare them. If we want to delete a render saved in the History panel, simply select the render and press the Delete button from the History toolbar. Now that we know how to use V-Ray Frame Buffer, the next step is to start exploring the rendering settings. <laughs>